Beckham, Ali Sadiq. Hey, how y'all doing? How the rest of y'all doing? Let me say this, let me say this, I've been thinking about this too. Father's Day is the worst holiday in the world. I've done the research, I already know. Let me tell you something. Mother's Day is the second most celebrated holiday in the world. Christmas is first, so it's, that means it's Jesus, then your mama. You know what Father's Day fall at? Number 20. I can't think of 18 other holidays. <laughs> Do you realize Halloween is number six? Does that mean ghosts and goblins go before fathers? <laughs> Arbor Day is number 13. I don't even know what that is. I just know it come before me, that's crazy. <laughs> Columbus Day is number 16. Celebrating Columbus Day is like celebrating somebody finding money in your house. <laughs> Where you get that $50 from? I discovered it in your kitchen. <laughs> Ridiculous. Fathers, and, I, and it's mother's fault. It's mother's fault, because see, when Mother's Day come around, fathers go in their pocket deep. Go in their pocket, hey, I want to give my mama something. You cash that money out. You know what mothers do? Hey, I want to get daddy something. Well, go in that car. It's some change in my little cup holder in there. <laughs> Don't nobody even have a sale for Father's Day. Who has a Father's Day sale? Mother's Day sale, it's like 30 of them. Everybody have Mother's Day sale. Don't nobody have no Father's Day sale. Who has Father's Day sale? The dollar store. <laughs> That's how you get water holes and jumper cables for Father's Day. And the stores know this, because now the stores got a little trick for Father's. They make little packages where they, a little box, give you suspenders, socks, and a shirt. One box. And you know what kids do? They give you that stuff throughout the year. They give you that shirt for Father's Day, them socks for your birthday, and then they just randomly give you something else as, you know, they think about it. It's crazy. Father's Day sucks, and I'm a father. I did all this work to be a father for it to suck. <laughs> and I'm a good father. I don't, I don't, I don't lie about my kids. I just keep my kids where they are. I have a daughter. She's a beautiful kid, but she's insane. Very much insane. Cause see, she has been doing, she's a swimmer. I'm just gonna tell you that. She's a swimmer, which is not a predominantly black sport. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Cause when you go to swimming, when you're a black parent, you go to swimming, they know that you're there because you're there. <laughs> you're like a, like a Oreo, just, you just in, you just out there. So, my daughter's very arrogant now because she didn't want a lot of races. And, you know, when um, we first started swimming, I used to think that the kids were saying little racist stuff about my baby because she would walk in and they were like, oh my God, they go to Black Seal. <laughs> I was like, what? Don't be calling my baby no damn Black Seal. <laughs> then this white dude said, no, no, man, that means that she really fast. Got me out there rooting. Go Black Seal, go Black Seal. But the problem with my daughter is this. I've been tracking this little white girl named Sarah Brown. Been tracking Sarah. I think Sarah's really fast, know all her numbers, know all her little tracking. My daughter's very arrogant. She don't even carry her stuff out the truck no more. She just get out the truck and just walk into the pool like I'm her assistant. I'm walking in with all her bags. <laughs> so you couldn't hold the door or nothing? <laughs> I'm walking in, and I hear my daughter say something crazy to Sarah Brown. Say, hey, Sarah. Yeah, I know we gonna race, but I'll be out the pool dry by the time you finish. I'm listening, I'm like, ooh. Got me all hype. I'm walking in with all this stuff. Yeah, Sarah. Dry. You heard her dry, Sarah. 
I don't believe my daughter at all. Because I know this little white girl is for real. Race happens. Race happens. My daughter lose the race. Come in second to Sarah Brown. Come up to me crying. <laughs> Daddy, I lost the race. I'm like, hey, it's like that sometime, Black Seal. <laughs> you was up against a great white. <laughs> People kill for love. I don't want to be killed for love. Because see, it's trigger words for me. Trigger words in a relationship. In the beginning, if somebody say, you know, I love hard, ooh, that's crazy. Because <laughs> it, it don't sound like that to me. It sounds good to you, I love hard. To me, it sounds like, you gonna be on cold cases? <laughs> if you're in a relationship with somebody and they say this to you, I can't live without you. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Break it up. I'm gonna find a way to get out of that relationship. Break it up that day. Hey, that, that sounds like I can't leave you. You can't leave without me, so I can't go. That sounds like forensic files. <laughs> you about to be on the news, boy. Tell you, people, I live in a gated community. Black people don't judge me because they trick me. They trick me. White people trick me. Because on the brochure, it was real multicultural on the brochure. It had everybody on that brochure smiling like they lived over there. And it's just, it's just all white people and me. That's it. It's just white people and I. I need a sitcom. I need something. It's just us, me and these white folks. Let me tell you something. White people will change you. You be thinking that you live around them and you're not going to be pleasant. Shit. White people don't play that. You live in their neighborhood and then they want to meet you. That's crazy, bro. That's how I found out it was all white people in my neighborhood because they want to meet you. See, I'm not accustomed to that. Let me tell you something, people. I'm from the projects. And in the projects, let me tell you what never happens in the projects. When you move into the projects, don't nobody come and greet you. Don't nobody say, hey, welcome to the projects. Welcome to hell. <laughs> so I, why do that? But when you in a gated community, oh, these white people want to meet you. I'm sitting in my house minding my own business. Doorbell rang. I opened the door. 400 white people outside my door. I ain't gonna lie, I panicked. I panicked. I panicked. I slammed the door and called the police. They protesting. They protesting. Who's protesting? All of them. And I'm so terrified when the police get there, I still got the chain on the door. I open the door, I say, what they say? They say, they are not protesting. They are coming to greet you. They have, I looked out there, white folks had baked goods and little baskets and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, they want to they be the brother. All right, all right. I'm like, hey, what's happening? Let me tell you what I learned about white people. And I want all other races to take this, because see, it's been a lot of years since we had a, a good stereotype. <laughs> oh, a lot of stereotypes dumb. But this one right here, oh, I did the research. <laughs> oh, I did the research. And they're not going to lie, because they're in here. Got a good stereotype about white people now. Did the research. White people love trail mix. <laughs> oh, they love it. Love it. Eat it every day. They love it. Look at them. Look at them and they're like, yes, I did have trail mix. <laughs> Got me eating it. Hate trail mix. Used to hate it. You know, black people don't like stuff without salt on it. We eat trail mix and like I got too much nutrients in it. It's all these vitamins and minerals in this. Have a son. His name is Hassan. Tell you something, because I told y'all earlier, I'm honest about my kids. Hassan, Hassan gonna be a serial killer. <laughs> I'm just, just throwing it out there so y'all will know. Because let me, let, me, let me tell you how I know Hassan gonna be a serial killer. Hassan is four years old, and Hassan whispers. 
Yeah. What four-year-old you know whisper? <laughs> and then he don't wake you up like a normal child. Because normal kids come to the front of the bed, wake you up face to face. Her son rub your feet. <laughs> you know how spooky it is to be woken up by a child whispering, rubbing your feet? I said, did I look dehydrated in my sleep or something? I say, nah, daddy, you want some juice? I said, I want no damn juice. He said, it's some pre poured juice in the kitchen. I said, pre poured juice? What the hell is pre poured juice? Most mothers know what pre poured juice is. This is juice that he poured for himself that his mother told him he cannot have. So it's just in the kitchen, pre-poured. <laughs> Since I didn't have to do nothing, I went to go get that juice. But I should have known it was a setup. Cause when I walked into the hallway, he gonna lean in the hallway, Daddy, will you get that juice? Bring it in here. <laughs> so we in his room drinking juice, minding our own business. His mama busts in the room. Why the hell are you letting him drink that juice? I said, I don't know. She walked out mad at me. I went right to my son. I said, hey, man, you got me in trouble. My son went to my ego. How you gonna get in trouble? You daddy. <laughs> got me all riled up. I said, you got damn right, I'm daddy. <laughs> I bust in the kitchen, hey. Who the hell are you to tell me that my son can't have no juice? <laughs> Say, I'm the one know your son is allergic to grape juice. <laughs> like, allergy allergic? <laughs> I look back, my son was swelling up. <laughs> As we was talking, he just getting big. I, two hours later, I end up in the hospital with my son, whispering, <laughs> rubbing his feet. Boy, four years old, I don't know everything about him. <laughs> he four, I only had him four years. I had my truck long than I had this boy. <laughs> in my neighborhood, like I said, I live in this little gated community, these white people. And white people are very pleasant, very pleasant. They want you to be pleasant. And what they do every morning, they get up and they walk around the community real fast. And I said, you know something? I'ma get up in the morning and I'ma speak to them white folks. So I, they, I get right, I'm ready. I'ma get right there to the curve. I'm like, yeah, they gonna come around here in a minute real fast, 6.45, here they come. And I yelled out, hey, good morning, white people. <laughs> Dude came right back, morning to you. I said, good, all right. He said, what you doing today? I said, shit, this was it. I'm just gonna <laughs> get up and speak to y'all and go back to sleep. That's what I'm 6.45 in the morning, the hell is wrong with you? He said, well, when you get up, you should go to the park. I said, what's happening at the park? He said, the dandelions are in bloom. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, all right, all right. So I ran in the house and Googled what a dandelion was, because <laughs> my flower game is real weak. I'm real weak on my flower game. And some of this stuff, you don't even know how to spell. You ain't know the danda, dandelion, dandelion, dan, da, 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 dandelion, dandelion. You don't even know how to spell it. You didn't, you didn't put dandelion in there, a lion come up that's in a zoo. No, no, that's dandelion. I don't need dandelion. <laughs> so I, I didn't got the dandelion in, so I end up in the park. I had never been in this park in the daytime before. I had only been in this park hustling. I had never been in this park. <laughs> I had never seen the whole park. I was like, this is my little hustle spot. But, so I'm in the park, minding my business, sitting down, looking at the dandelions. White man named Tim came and sat down next to me. 
He said, hey, how you doing? I said, I'm doing good. He said, you here for the dandelions? I said, I am here for the dandelions. <laughs> he said, there's something very special about these dandelions. I said, what's that? He said, we sit here long enough, some red-chested robins will come play in the dandelions. I said, you don't say. He said, I just said. So I'm sitting there, sun beating down on me. I'm looking at the dandelions. He asked me, he say, you hungry? I say, I could eat. <laughs> he say, you want some trail mix? I say, I would love some trail mix. <laughs> so sitting there eating trail mix, he had a tuna fish sandwich too. He said, you want half my tuna fish? I say, I would love half of your tuna fish. So we sitting there, so I know, eating a salad, eating tuna fish, and eating trail mix, and the sun beating down on me, and looking at the dandelions. And, and I knew it was working, this pleasantry was working on me, because I said, Tim, look, red chested robins. <laughs> and that's it. That's the end of the story. <laughs> I just told y'all, because I can't tell my friends. You know how this story sounded to my thug ass friends? Hey man, what you do today, man? I went to the park and looked at some dandelions and red chips and robin some trail mix and a half a tuna with a sandwich with a white man named Tim. What type of homosexual shit would you on? I didn't, I didn't think it was homosexual when I was doing it. I was... So I said to myself, since in my neighborhood I'm getting all these tips on how to be pleasant, I'm gonna take some of these tips back to the hood. So I pull up in the hood, See my partner, Nap. I say, hey, Nap, come to the park with me. He say, hold up, let me get my gun. I say, me don't need your gun. <laughs> man, just come on. We in the car riding. I say, man, we going to the park for? I say, we going to look at some dandelions. I say, what's a dandelion? I say, Google it on your phone. I saw him over there to my dandelion. <laughs> so I just spelled the phone. Get to the park. He said, man, what a dandelion he said. I said, he right there. Yeah, I'm chill, cool. I don't like this, but I'm cool. I said, yeah, we chilling. We're going to just sit here and watch the dandelion. I said, but it's something very interesting <laughs> about these dandelions. I said, we sit here long enough, some red-chested robins, a come playing them dandelion. You know what he said? Man, I'm gonna shoot one of them birds. I said, you can't shoot the birds. This is about being pleasant. Here you a trail mix, man. Just sit here. I don't need no damn trail mix. Now, we've been there for an hour. He looking at the dandelion, sun beating down on him, he ain't got hungry. Cracked that trail mix up. <laughs> Sitting there eating that trail mix. Yo, what's these little red things right here? I say them cranberries. Yeah, I the cranberries. <laughs> so I knew it was working on him. I knew it was working on him. Trail mix, the sun, dandelions. He eat trail mix, turned to me and said, Lee, look, red just the rockets. <laughs> we riding home. He talking about the little trip. He, yeah, man, that's cool, man. Dandelions. <laughs> Trail mix, man. Them cranberry, I'm gonna get some of that. Where you get that from? I said, man, them birds is beautiful, man. Them birds is beautiful. Pull up to the hood, he get out. Do you know he gonna lean back in my damn car? After I done had a good time with this boy, he gonna lean the car, say, man, let me tell you something. Don't you tell nobody I had a good time at that point. <laughs> he walking off, and I, and I saw him do like this. He said, yeah, man, red just Robbins. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there looking like, he don't know how pleasant that was. <laughs> just go and Look at some red chested robins, 
and eat some trail mix and be able to tell that story in front of a whole lot of people. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell y'all, don't you tell nobody I had a good time at that park. My name is Ali. <laughs>